Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an action, thriller film from 2008, titled Terra Nova. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. On the cold hills of a deserted island, Villain is trying to find a safe spot to camp. He walks for miles until he slips and falls into a freezing river, but after floating away for a while, he manages to climb out and continue his journey. When he gets too tired to keep going, he stops to rest against a big rock, grabs a flower to eat, and begins thinking back to how all this started. Villain is in jail for life for the assassination of six men, when one afternoon, he's taken to see the prison governor, who asks him what he dreams of. He isn't the only person going through this, various of his fellow prisoners are also being called to the governor's office and are asked the same question. Moriak says he wants to see the sea, Yakut wants to witness the war against China, Obazyanka won't speak, Abazian wants to work in this prison and be a governor, Tolia wants to follow the progress of the space station and Sipa wants to see women again, but Thilin's answer is never shown. The governor tells them they've been selected to be transferred to a penal colony, and shortly afterward, all prisoners are boarded into a ship. Just like in the actual prison, the prisoners are divided into groups and put into cells, although Abazian acts like he is the boss and even kills a man to take his bed. When the hatch is finally closed and the boat takes off, the prisoners start panicking, thinking this has all been a trick to let them die at sea. As the men begin getting violent, Dylan remembers a conversation he had with Sipa back in prison. Sipa has some severe mental issues and would always draw on the wall and talk nonsense, but that day, he mentioned heaven and hell not having any seats left and a third purgatory-like place being prepared for people like them. Julien had thought it was more of his usual nonsense back then, but he's starting to see the merits of it now. After a while, everyone calms down and tries to spend the trip chit-chatting and eating, but in the middle of the journey, a gang escapes from one of the cells, looking for their compatriot. Abazian pretends to negotiate at first only to kill the man they're looking for, causing a riot to start, prisoners on both sides begin hitting and killing each other through the bars except for Staryi, an old man that stays behind praying. The fight doesn't last long though, the guards quickly arrive and after stopping them with a warning shot, they throw a sleeping gas grenade to knock them all out. Eventually, they make it to a deserted island, where the prisoners are put into numbered handcuffs and left at the beach so they can listen to what Mr. Olufsen and Marta, the heads of the Terra Nova project, have to say. Since the death penalty has become illegal in all countries, prisons have been running out of space to hold such a large number of criminals, which is why the Russian government has offered this land to start this project, funded by some international organizations. Starting today, the prisoners are colonists living under their protection, and everything they need to survive is being provided, including food that should last three months. A satellite will be watching them all the time, and there also are some communication buoys around. They have the possibility to take a boat to one of them to press the red button and say what they need, if a green light appears, that means the request has been accepted. Abazian isn't happy about the idea of being recorded 24-7 so he throws a big rock in protest, but the guards quickly make him stand back with some warning shots. Marta clarifies that the buoys can also be used to ask to leave the project by saying their name and the reason why they want to leave. If they do, they'll be returned to prison. By putting the buoys on the sea instead of on the beach, they make sure that the decision is thought twice before risking getting on a boat. Before leaving, the guards drop a bunch of keys on the sand, explaining they are numbered to match their handcuffs. The prisoners rush towards them and start fighting over them while Dylan and Sipa stay safely behind, only grabbing the keys that the others drop. Staryi also decides to stay behind and watch how a gang forms a line around the keys to keep their rivals out and a group goes to the crates the guards left to pick up some weapons and attack the crowd with them. Eventually, Ali's gang takes control of the situation. Ali gets a jacket and good shoes for himself and Staryi before choosing a man to send out on the boat, but as soon as he grabs someone, the group takes the chance to attack and the fight starts again. Dozens of men die in the fight, Moriah kills Ali with a rock, Abazian kills Staryi also with a rock, and the three men that get on a boat to reach the buoy fall to the sea and die drowning. All the remaining prisoners go to the warehouse and begin distributing the supplies, and Abazian takes advantage of the tools found to get his cuffs open by force. Dylan packs a bunch of supplies in a bag and grabs himself a jacket while listening to Sipa say there is no way the food will last three months, then he leaves the area to survive on his own and hopefully find a way out of the island, taking us back to the beginning of the story. Dylan explores the island until he finds an area with no snow and a rocky formation that will provide some shelter, so he decides to sit there while looking at a picture of his family that he's kept hidden in his prison uniform. He misses them terribly, and falls asleep with tears in his eyes. Sometime later, he wakes up when he hears some squealing, turns out the supplies were filled with rodents, and they are now eating through his food and bag. When it starts raining, Dylan finds shelter under the rock formation he saw before, getting a fire going for warmth and heating some water. After it stops raining, he catches a bird and roasts it over the fire, that's when Sipa finds him. As he chit-chats with him, he tries to steal his knife, but Dylan sees him and takes it back. Sipa offers some salt he had with him and his help in exchange for some meat, which Siling accepts, so Sipa goes to pick up more wood and sees the family picture on Dylan hung on the rocks, which makes him blow a kiss at Dylan's wife. Afterward, 
They share the bird, and when they're done eating, Sipa walks to the edge of the cliff, explaining he doesn't jump because he's too afraid. He asks Thilin why he won't die either, and Thilin explains it's because of his family, they're dead and he wants to be buried next to them, which can't happen if he dies on the island. The two men fall asleep, and when Thilin wakes up, he finds Sipa has stolen the picture to use it as inspiration for his debauchery. Furious, Thilin beats him up and pushes him off the cliff, but Sipa doesn't die because he doesn't fall into the ocean, he drops on a hill right underneath. But even after this disagreement, the two of them travel together as they explore the island, Sipa easily amuses himself with the trash he finds in the water while Thilin tries to fish, but the only living being they find in the water is some sort of aquatic centipede, which freaks Sipa out. While looking around, Thilin is shocked to suddenly find part of a seaplane among the rocks. It only takes going a bit farther up the hill to find the entire plane, which gives him a bit of hope because he used to be a pilot and would be able to fly it. However, two men aren't enough to move it, so for now, they go back to their shelter. Villain starts a fire with some matches he had grabbed at the warehouse, but there's something in them that creates a very toxic smoke. He moves away from the fire and drags a sleeping Sipa with him, who at first won't wake up. It takes a few shakes from Villain for him to finally regain consciousness, but his mouth only continues to spout nonsense, and Villain realizes the cold will kill them any minute now. The two men decide to go back to the base and see if they can steal some coal. Back in the base, life hasn't been easy for everyone. Abazian and his gang are in control and keeping a routine while sharing the supplies, and Abazian even asks them to call him governor. But they keep anyone that isn't in their team inside the barracks, they only allow them to come out to have a walk in an enclosed area, similar to real prisons, while Estonitz yells at them from the watchtower. When they're sent back, they need to run because whoever is last gets killed to be used as food later. Villain and Sipa manage to reach the coal box and find the remains of a fire. After walking for so long, they're almost freezing, so they can't help laying down next to the fire and falling asleep. But Sipa wakes up quickly when he hears some noises, the gang is coming over with their latest prisoner for roasting. He runs to hide behind a rock, but Thilin is still out there, so he comes back out to rescue him, but he isn't fast enough and Abazian's men find them and capture them. The two of them are taken back to base, where Abazian tries to decide what their punishment will be for having run away with supplies when they arrived. Yuku tries to remind them that they were on their side during the ship fight, causing Estonitz to insult him for trying to meddle. Yukut replies by hitting him, and this causes the whole gang to team up to hit him in return, earning Yukut a place in the barracks with Dylan and Sipa. They walk around for a while and when Estonitz announces it's time to return, Dylan stays behind, but Sipa comes back from him and drags him inside with him. They can only watch as the last standing man is captured and tied to a pole, begging for some water as his last wish, so Sipa takes pity on him and brings a cup to his lips before he is killed. Later, before going to sleep, the group discusses the possibility of rebelling. They're unsure because it may be dangerous, but Shram convinces them is worth trying. The next morning, Tolia shows Abaziankat that he's installed a secret trap in his workshop to catch any potential thieves. After the group takes his daily walk, Estonitz tries to get them back inside to get the usual game going, but only two men run, the rest stand back and come together while Yakut throws a rock at Estonitz to shut him up. Dylan walks up to Abazian and offers him a deal, if he lets them go to the buoy and ask for food, he'll tell him the location of the plane he found. Abazian accepts and opens the gate to let them out. While Tolia and Thilin go with two other men on the boat, Abazian asks his men if they know anything about Thilin, and that's how he learns he was a pilot, that his family died in a plane crash, and he went to jail for killing flight dispatchers at the airport with a rifle. This crime was classified as murder in a state of severe emotional agitation, which Abazian thinks means Thilin has a guilty conscience. As soon as the boat is far enough, he orders the group to go back to the barracks, cancelling his deal. Yukut tries to confront them, but he's immediately killed, so Abazian grabs one more man before declaring the game is on again. The group can only run back to the barracks since a fight would be a very bad idea because Abazian's men are armed. Meanwhile at sea, one of the men falls off the boat, but they catch him just in time and drag him back up. Tolia reaches the buoy and asks for help, but it's broken, and not even his tools will help. They go back to the shore and Nilan tells Abazian that food is on its way, but Abazian doesn't believe him because there wasn't a green light of confirmation. Tolia reminds him of the existence of the plane, but Abazian doesn't believe that's true either, but it inspires Obazyanka to move around with his arms open like one. Abazian finds this distracting and grabs him by the neck, so Tolia uses the chance to come at him from behind and kill him. Two other members of his group, Amurbek and Ertsanov, kill the rest of their gang and watch Estonitz run away before they can catch him as well. They ask Dylan what to do next, and he asks them to free the men from the barracks because he swears food is coming and they just didn't see the light because it was broken. The men are skeptical about this and remind him now they have plenty of bodies to feed on later, but Tolia thinks they should be buried. Dylan reminds him about the plane as well, so Amorbek and Ertsanov finally accept. They free the prisoners and tell them they'll be waiting a few days for the food to arrive, but they won't be using each other as food anymore, so everyone needs to stay calm and cooperate. 
They'll also send a group to rescue the plane, which they'll put in a hangar they'll build and slowly repair it to escape later. Suddenly, Sipa interrupts their plans claiming there's no satellite while writing an SOS message using sand and three bodies. Sometime later, Estonitz returns to the base, and because of the new rules that say they need to keep the peace, they decide to ignore what he's done to them for now and share their food with him anyway. Dylan guides a group of men towards the plane, and their moods greatly increase when they see he's been telling the truth. Together they take it apart for easier transport and carry the pieces back to base. Eventually, Marta arrives at the island with a bunch of guards. They use gas to keep the men away, but they do allow Dylan come to talk to her and discuss the list of things they've requested. She's confused on why they're asking for gas, and he explains it's for the generators, which are supposed to be wind-powered but they don't work during the polar night. In truth, they want the gas for the plane. Dylan takes the chance to ask why they didn't answer Sipa's SOS message, and Marta explains their satellite is of the infrared kind, they see heat, so they can locate people in stoves but not words. She also wants to know what people were doing so far away from the base some days ago, and he tells her they were fishing. They don't believe him because there's no fish in the area, so he lies again and tells them they've been eating those centipede-like creatures, which she finds very shocking. They also want to know how many of the original 206 colonists are left, which Dylan finds suspicious because they should be able to tell with their satellite. He tells them 87 are left, and many are sick, but nobody wants to abandon the project and return to jail. Before Dylan leaves, Marty tells him he has the right to one personal request, so he gives her a few sheets of paper asking her to provide the group well. Once the guards have left the new supplies, Dylan and his men try the gas in the plane hidden in the hangar and happily confirm it does work. Afterward, they watch a new group of American prisoners arrive as the guards and Marta leave the island. These prisoners have a leader too, a very large man that Dylan tries to shake hands with. The man doesn't take it, in fact, he hits Dylan, which triggers a fight between both sides. The encounter is brutal and nobody hesitates to go for the kill, so Sipa drags Dylan with him to hide him in the workshop. One of the Americans tries to follow them, but he falls on Tolia's trap and instantly dies. Ertsinov goes up against the American leader and gets overpowered, but before he can get killed, Amarbek cuts in and kills the big man instead as the buildings around them catch on fire. All this is being watched by the heads of the project. When they realize the situation is finally out of control and that over 40% of the colony has been killed, Marta calls the central office and is told to proceed with Code Naked Island, which sends a bunch of guards to the island that shoots all the reminder prisoners while Marta burns Dylan's letters. Luckily, a few men are still alive thanks to having hidden in the mountains or the hangar, Dylan, Sipa, Ertsinov, and Tolia. Together they push the plane out, but when they're about to board it, Sipa tells them goodbye and runs to the hill so he can jump into the ocean, not afraid anymore. The remaining trio gets in the plane and Dylan manages to make it take off safely, although the guards shoot at them on the way. His two companions die, but Dylan isn't hit by the bullets, so he flies away into his freedom. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.